everybody, this is uh, Silver Zephyr Falcon, and today I will be playing my first Let's Play ever. This is... Wait for it. Tack and the Power of Juju. Now, this is a really cool platformer. It's not the most unique platformer, but it does have some good elements that make it... Um, different than other platformers. Well, let's just get started. I'm not going to talk to the cutscenes because they're funny and you should hear them. I can never remember that part. Maybe uh, no, no, but it's Lobautau something. Is this chanting ever going to work? What is it going to take to get into contact with a powerful juju spirit from another world? It worked! Hello? Can you hear me? You do not speak, but I see that you listen. You look so strange. Your clothes. A power stick you hold in your hand. I have never seen a juju like you before. And what is this magic box you watch me on? It is clearly the most important thing in your hut. You do me great honor to watch me on it. My name is Jabulba. I am the powerful shaman of the great and legendary Pupanuno people. For generations we have... Hey! Hey, quiet out there! I'm talking to a juju! Tech, would you shut those people up? This is important! And get Warrior Lock! I want to introduce him to this juju here! I am so sorry, oh strange and powerful juju. There's a lot going on today. That's why I've called upon you for your help. Let me explain. Throughout the history of the Pupanunu people, shaman like myself have known that someday something terrible would happen to our great protector, the Moon Juju. So said the Pupanunu people's prophecy. The Moon Juju is our shield against evil. And the source of my juju power. She is strong and nice and oh, so beautiful. Oh, that's Tlaylock. He's not nice and he's sure not beautiful. He's jealous and practices bad juju. At the council that chose the new high shaman, he was passed over in favor of me. So last night, Tlaylock decided to take his revenge. Tlaylock crept into the Temple of the Moon with his foul servants, pins and needles, and stole the Moonstones, the source of the Moon Juju's power. The first thing Tlaylock did was to use the Moonstones to change the Pupanunu people into stupid, helpless sheep. Without the Moon Juju, my power was only enough to protect a few. And this is only the beginning of Tlaylock's <laughs> terrible plan. But Tlaylock is a fool. He won't get away with it. For the Pupanuno people's prophecy clearly says a mighty warrior trained by the High Shaman will defeat Tlaylock and save the Moon Juju. I have trained such a warrior. His name is Lock. <laughs> Tech! What are you doing? You told me to go get Lock. Yes, that's right. Go fetch Lock. Stop playing with the sheep. I did get Lock. No, you fetched a dirty, stinky animal. That's Lock. See, he's wearing Lock's amulet. Tway Lock must have changed him into a sheep. No, 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 no. This is all wrong. This isn't in the the poop 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 the mighty warrior doesn't lick my foot. Stop the licking, Lock! Oh, this is terrible. Can't we just change him back? I don't know. Yes, 
I've got it. We can change Locke back into a mighty warrior. This great juju spirit who watches us from another world can help. Follow Tech. Protect him with your power. Go with Tech to the ancient burial ground of our ancestors and put the teeth into the statues. And get me some magical lubu plants while you're out. Now go! Both of you! Locke must stop Tleilak before he destroys the moon goddess! So yeah, that was our opening cutscene, where they broke the fourth wall a billion times. <laughs> this is our main character, uh, Tack, on the loading screen. And here's the tutorial level. Hello, Tack. My name's Flora. The moon juju sent me here to hang out with you and help you whenever I can. Well, it's a long road ahead. We better get started. She'll get annoying a lot in this tutorial level. You seem smart enough to figure this out on your own, but you move yourself around by using the move stick, and if you need to jump, it's as simple as pressing the jump button. You can press the jump button twice to perform a double jump. Hey, don't laugh. Yeah. I like to think of myself as thorough. Self-explanatory for the win. I just thought of something else important to tell you. Sometimes you'll notice that the camera's not facing the same direction you want to go, you can use the camera stick to rotate the camera around yourself. If the camera isn't looking in the direction you want, just use the camera stick to rotate it until you see what you need to see. Rotate the camera now to look at me. Whee! Great! Now you can do this anytime you need to look at something. Simple enough. Yep, tutorial levels. Same as every other tutorial level, where they tell you everything that you already know. Because you've played this game a billion times. Okay, Tack. In the end, I think you'll find most animals to be helpful in some way or another. If you come across an animal, you should experiment with it to learn how it can help you. Some animals can even be ridden. Oh, yes, the mighty rhino. These fellows are great for breaking things into little tiny pieces. Go ahead and jump on board. If you want him to speed up, try giving him a swat with your club. Listen to the agents. If you want something to go faster, just hit it with a stick. Let's break down these walls here. Have some fun with this rhino before we get rid of it. We can just continuously hit it for it to stay fast. But you need to watch where you're going, because if you run into a wall like this, it'll fling you off. You can also get off of it by pressing, I think, the X button. This is the GameCube version, in case anyone cared. The PS2 version, of course, has different controls. I don't think there's an Xbox Now, version. while you're adventuring, you'll no doubt discover you can pick up certain items. What's cool is that you can throw any item you pick up by just using the action button. If you're tired of carrying an object around and just want to set it down, press the use button. I don't know why they call it the use button. I don't think you've ever, you ever actually used anything with the use button. You just set it down. Yeah, and that's the sign that says go that way. In case you couldn't tell. Sometimes when you jump, you'll grab onto a ledge. If you're holding something when you grab a ledge, you'll always drop that item. You'll also drop it if you fall off tall ledges. Some that can be important you see this little guy? Series. He's a loop tail monkey, and quite mischievous, I might add. Monkeys like this one love throwing coconuts at other animals. Yes, this is something you have to keep in mind. Hey, Tad, try throwing the melon at the monkey to see what happens. He will always throw his coconut at whatever is closest to him. So you want to throw and get out of the way, so he won't throw at you. Yeah, you did it! Did you notice that if you toss something at him, he'll toss a coconut at whoever's I just closest said to him? That. Keep this in mind while you're adventuring. Alright, let's get going. Hello, monkey. Feathers are very valuable. Make sure you pick up any feathers you see. To pick up a feather, just run through it. There are different kinds of feathers you can find in the world. These yellow feathers are health feathers. See how they look like the feather on the top of your head? That's because the feather on your head is also your health meter. When it turns all the way purple, you're out of health. These other feathers also give you health, but their primary use is for magic. As you progress, you'll need mana feathers to do magic. And magic will be important later in the game, but not for a while. 
still have a long way to go before that'll be important. I see your current weapon is the club. Hmm. It's a little basic, but easy to use. Just press the action button to swing the club. Practice on these breakable jars. Now this is where you want to be careful. Yeah, you can break the first couple jars with no problem. There's nothing going on. Look out, Tap! But when you press this jar. Is hiding in that jar. Okay. Use your club. It's gonna take a few hits, but I know you can do it. That was a Nerval, one of the most common enemies of this game. A kind of Goomba, if you're a Mario fan. They are everywhere, and at this point they actually are top enemies. Because all you have is a club. They'll run at you, jump on you, do whatever they can to try to kill you. That takes four hits with a club to kill them. So they can actually be kind of annoying. But if you just continuously swing your club, they're not a problem. Occasionally they'll get some health off of you, but there's enough feathers in these early levels that it doesn't matter. Ah, oh, I missed that one. Oh well. It's not worth it. Wow! Look at the orangutan bend that banana tree! I wonder what would happen if you stood on the big leaf. You should try it, Tap. The orangutans are really fun. If you get too close to them, they'll actually look at you. Well, that one didn't, but he was in the middle of his family. She probably. Awesome, Doc! Anytime you want to have the orangutan throw you somewhere, just stand near him and he'll pull down the tree. Oh, okay, it is a guy. According to the flora. Why would they do it? They'll, like, look sideways at you, and it's really cool. Oh, wow. They only do it sometimes. Ah. Look at the water effect in this game. Look how pretty they are. The controls are kind of screwed up in the water, but that's a minor There'll be thing. plenty of places in the world where you'll have to use ropes. Remember, though, you'll swing in the direction you're facing, so push the move stick left or right to line yourself up before you jump off. Yeah. You can line yourself up by just moving around the control stick. You can do that while you're swinging, too, but you just need to make sure that you're jumping in the right direction when you do. Don't worry too much about what direction you're swinging when you start swinging, because you can readjust it fairly easily. And whenever you're up in the area that you want to go, you just jump off. Look how beautiful this area is. Oh, feathers. It just looks so flowing. Kind of a combination of fantasy and the whole tribal aspect that they're trying to go for. Yeah, and if you hit an orangutan, it'll just punch you back. And then stand there laughing hysterically at you. There he's looking back at me. I only took losing a third of my health to do it. See if you can get past them. I'm gonna show you exactly what these rams do. And why you should avoid them at all costs. You know, whenever the rams finished sending you flying, he always goes back to the same location. Maybe you could use a melon to lure him away from the door. Try setting a melon down on the ground somewhere near him and see what happens. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Take this melon. I usually put it over at this tree because it's far enough away that he won't attack you, but it's close enough that he'll actually notice it's there. And you can walk anywhere near him while he's going towards this melon, he won't hurt you. He's that oblivious. So we just walk past him and open his door. Way to go, Tack! You're ready to help Jabulba turn Locke and the other villagers back into human form. Jabulba said we needed to go to the burial grounds. We can get there from your village. Let's get started. So that's the end of the tutorial level, as you see we're back at the beginning, where we started. And through this is the village and the main portion of the game. You never need to come back to the tutorial area ever again. So I think I'm gonna end it off just after this. I'll show you the main village. And not really much of it. And then I'll stop. I've accomplished a lot. This is Tax Village, home of the Pupanunu people. They're wonderful and really friendly. 
Too bad most everyone's been turned into a sheep. Hopefully we can help them. Yeah. All right, Flora. Well, so yeah, this is gonna be where I'm gonna sign off. Um, if you have any suggestions for me, any recommendations that might help me with commenting, if there's any games that you want me to LP in the future, I'm happy to LP anything that I own or it can be easily accessible. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.